Hey, what's going on guys? Mark back in the workshop on Mark's Aquatics. Right on this little video, I'm going to be taking you for a trip up into the woods and we're going to be getting some live food, okay? Live food for the fish, free of charge. And all I'm going to take is my trusty little bucket there, my little tub and my very fine net. And we're going to go up in the woods and there's a special little pool up there, which I'm going to let you guys in on. So if you've got one around your house, or in your woodland it's a little gold mine for free food so so guys without further ado let's get up the woods well guys we're in the woods absolutely beautiful in here today not much around birds are whistling and tweeting in the bushes fantastic stuff now I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna go up to my little pond and we're gonna have a look around there just to see if hopefully this time of the year it's absolutely teeming with what I'm thinking it is we'll have a good little haul we can take some home and then we can make a little culture up which will last us the summer through okay well there you go guys there's a lovely piece of oak down there look at that I won't disturb it because there's going to be all sorts of little creatures and critters underneath there and I don't want to disturb them because I'm not going to take it now that is on the on the on the path so uh, sadly dogs are going to be weeing all over that and uh, and it's not going to be very nice to be put in a tank. It's a lovely shape though. Some stunning little markings and ribs in amongst it. And you could split that in half quite easily and make some lovely decorations and soak it for a while. But, like I said, it's on the path. So I'm not going to take that today. If you go down in the woods today, you better stay six feet apart. Look at that. Absolutely stunning. The bluebells are just starting to come out. And in my local woods here, it gets like a, well, it's just a sea of blue in, a, in about a, in a few weeks time. All these guys will be out and looking absolutely beautiful. Look at the colour of that, absolutely perfect they are. Right guys, I've just come across a lovely little baby beech tree. It's actually been snapped off at the top. But you can see most of these buds, they're still closed. But down the bottom here, some of them are just starting to come out. And they are absolutely great for your shrimps. They really are. Shrimp absolutely love those. Just blanch them in hot water, put them in your tank, and they'll go to town on them. As with the um, the beech trees as well. No, sorry, no, that's a beech tree. With um, brambles just coming out, just like that. Look at that. Beautiful green bramble shoots. Just blanch them little guys and put them in your tanks. Another great source of calcium magnesium and all that kind of stuff for your shrimps as well all the other different trees are coming out you've got the buds coming out on the oak all your fruit trees as well guys you can have fruit trees if you've got them in your garden you can be taking off leaves from your fruit trees blanching them there's a nice little beach there you can just see there's beautiful leaves right in the middle of the screen there and they will be absolutely perfect for all your shrimps All the stinging nettles are coming out now as well. They're absolutely brilliant. Now a lot of people have trouble with their shrimp and they're not, uh, they're not shedding. Now this could be a reason that the vitamins and the minerals that you're giving them in various foods that are cheap to produce and everything else haven't got those vitamins and minerals in them, okay? So by giving them a great source of, uh, of minerals, they will get those minerals into their bodies and they will utilize that to build up their new shell and that will in turn allow them to shed more naturally and you won't lose as many that way okay wow look at that that's a huge big tree there that's fallen over it's rotted off of this piece here as you can see going right up it's got all those woodpecker holes in there look at those bracket funguses all over the place look at that you got some holes up the top there where they've been rooting around and that one there with that it's got like a little a little roof right over the top of that hole look at that that's fantastic but that was a big old tree, that that's broken away. You can see where it's rotted there through the middle. By the looks of it. Something metal there which is grown into the tree. Well, it could be a stone actually. Oh, it's very, very stuck in there, so it could be a could be a bit of metal. It looks a bit steely. 
Another bracket fungus there and old nails people have banged in over the years. Look at that. Very, very rotten. And that's why it's come down. That's a little bit big to go in my tank, that one. Lots more bracket funguses there as well. Look. I can't believe how lovely it is out here today. Now, what we're looking for in the woods here, we've got a stream. But just off the stream, there's a little pool, which I'm looking for, which is stagnant water it's where the water it's a big dip in the in the ground and it's filled up with water and that's what i'm looking for so i'm going to head my way to the stream and when i get to that my bearings i'll know where i am and then we can have a look at what's in the stream and also what's in this little pool and hopefully it's the right time of year because i came i've been coming up here for years now collecting these little guys and um Hopefully there'll be a load in there. Ah, right, here we are. Beautiful little stream that runs down through the woods here. All the way from up there, goes right the way through the trees, right up to the hill. And comes, like I say, just trickling all the way down. We had some really heavy rain recently, which flooded a lot of properties out. And you can still see the big sticks and stuff where it went into spate, which is a flood. And it's come racing around here and carried on down. Now I know that little pond of mine is down there. But I think what we do is first we'll just have a little look in the, uh, in the river here. Sorry, in the stream and see what we can see. Well, okay guys, there's a couple of caddis fly larvae there and as you can see they make like a mucous membrane and they stick all the little bits of sand and silt together and make a little tiny tube which is quite strong but I don't know if you can see in there the little guys live inside and basically they come out with their little legs and they crawl off so they're always on the move under the surface looking for food and look at that Absolutely fabulous little guys they are. Let's go right in. And then you can see the way they've made their shells up. Look at that, little, little chrysalis. Anyway, let's get these little guys back into their domain. They'll probably roll off. There you go. Now they're nice and happy, going back home. Like I say, you can feed those. You can take the, the, uh, the outside of their casing off and feed them the larvae inside if you fancy doing that I've got a lot of food at home and I'm not really in need or in a great need of food so I'm not going to bother with uh, with taking those today right okay guys we're at the pond and now you can see it. it's a stagnant old pond <laughs> stinky old thing full of leaves you can see the oak leaves beech leaves all kinds of stuff which is fallen in here branches it's super tanned water as you can see now that's all that good tannin which has come out from the leaves just like you guys know who use Indian almond leaves that they use that tannin in the water now oak leaves also possess possess those 
antifungal and antibacterial properties okay so that's why the water is so tanned now because of that it's nice sterile water perfect conditions for Daphnia to grow and it's absolutely teeming with them I can't believe how many there is there was more than last year I can see them all over the leaves little orange dots hopping around all over the place but it's super slippery around here and I fell in here last time and I don't fancy getting my shoes in here again because they absolutely stank. But if you want to make yourself up a nice little um, culture of these guys, okay, take a carrier bag with you. Now, I, I'm just going to tell you how I do this. I'm not going to bother because I've got this pond just very, very close to me and I can harvest as and when. So it's basically my ready source when I need them. I'll come and get them, okay? But all you need is a, a nice little black barrel or something like that or a little water butt cut it off or even a, an old half a barrel if it's waterproof if not put a little liner in there fill it up with some old tank water some old aquarium water and collect a load of these old dead and decaying leaves okay because as I know a lot of people on YouTube have made different Daphne videos now to breed them and with yeast and all this kind of different stuff but nature is the best way of doing it okay and all you need to do is harvest some of these bring up every net down scoop out a load of these leaves from in here Put them in a bag, take them home, add that to your barrel or your water butt or whatever. Collect a load of these, throw them in, and they will literally breed all year round. Keep them in a nice sunny position. Now it's the summer. And you'll have a ready supply, okay? If you've got a nice little end of the garden, which is just nicely sunny and you can get it away, you'll have all sorts in there as well. You can have the mosquito larvae, which will lay eggs in there, and you can harvest them as well. And they're handy because they just come to the surface to breathe through their tails if you didn't know that that's why when you disturb them you see them all wriggling down like this and uh, and get one out of the way and then as soon as you've gone and it's nice and quiet again they all float back up to the surface so if you go in there nice and quiet when it's still with your net zip it across the surface you can have some out for your fish and it's a lovely and amazing way and that is some of my biggest secret that I can give you for breeding fish is super fresh food straight out of nature okay before you put it into your tank obviously rinse it in some fresh water take off anything that's in there through a micro sieve or through their net before you feed it to the fish okay and they will just keep on breeding now you can add little bits of yeast to the pond as well or your pool if you'd like to do that but the breaking down leaves okay is what the the uh, the daphnia feed on okay they feed on the algae which is growing in the water anyway the bacteria which is breaking down the leaves they feed off of that and obviously you can supplement feed with a little bit of yeast as well if you like um, which will keep your colony going so I think what I'll do is I'll get down a little bit closer and I'll get the net in there and I'll show you how productive this little tiny pond is now I'm not sure if you can see them there but there's absolutely thousands along the edge of that wood there and I'll get my net now and I'll just wet it in this side always wet your nets first and if I come this side and I just zip that through the water like that and shake that look at that absolutely thousands of them and you'd pay three to four pound for half of that in a little bag of water down in your local fish shop and here in nature this time of the year they're in huge abundance and it really is worth taking advantage of it really is so I'm gonna just scoop the jug of water out like so and that was I just scooped the water out and got about a thousand in there just by scooping the water out I'll just move that now that's the tanned water that you can see invert the net shake them down let that just touch the water okay look at that I reversed the net then looks silly and there you go and with one scoopful I've got absolutely thousands of them already in there so like I say that's the tanned water there that's what we need that's why I say take these leaves home and you'll uh, you can see them going in there but they're thousands look at that and look at that there's another load there as well now I'm going to take a few of these because old skinny needs to be putting on some weight so we're going to make sure she's fed up and get her back up to speed now I'm going to try my best not to fall in here We'll have a couple of more scoops of these, I think. There's another heap of them over there. Look at that. Absolutely thousands of them. So, go in your woodland, guys. I'm just going to take that many for now, I think. I'm not going to go mad. 
because I don't really need to. I don't know if you can see them in there. But I'll give you a better shot of how many we got when I get back to the house. Right guys, we're back at the house. Flowers are looking lovely. Now put strawberries in here and it's got gravel underneath. Now I put it in there last year and we had it for a little bird feeder. So what happens is, is the bloodworms, well the the actual, the adults will come in here and they will lay their eggs in amongst this. As you can see, it's got, it's got a bit of water in there underneath. And if I pull that water back and let the water settle, you should see some bloodworms when it clears up a bit and that's what I need that little pipette for because when that starts to settle with a bit of luck we'll have quite a few lurking around in here I've probably pushed yeah you know, there's one there already look I'm not sure if you can if you can see it with the pipette but I'll get him he's on a piece of gravel and they oh let me get him into the sun hope that's clear it's very bright well there you go you can see a little bloodworm on there so we'll put him in the i'll put him in the pot with all these daphnia look at all those guys we've got heaps of them in there skinny is not going to be skinny for too much longer i don't think so is this settled yet let me have a look we're starting to settle let me try and get out of the sun and hopefully we'll see a few more. I think there's another one in there. Yep, there he is. He's on the end of the on the end of the pipette there, you can see him. So I'm gonna grab a few more out of here. I'm gonna wait for it to clear for five minutes. Oh there's one there, you can just see him lurking around in the side. Oh well, there you go guys, there's another one in there. I think. There he is. You're not gonna you're going to get a few it's going to take some time but it's all it's all worth it squeeze him in there for something else to put in the pot and i'll get a few more and i think then we'll go in show you what i've got say what we can do with it and um, we'll give skinny a load of these daphnia to fatten her up right guys we're back in the workshop there's a little skinny mini there in the background we'll have a quick look at you have you put on any weight yet you've eaten all the snails in there and now you're looking at all these Daphne and now but we've got millions of these guys in here as you can see and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pour them into my my little net which I've got first just so we can show, I'll show you them first I've got my fine micron net here I've got a couple of these things around the workshop and in my coral room for rotifers for this kind of thing and that will fit nicely on the top of there when I want to do certain things but all I'm going to do now is I'm going to pour this water into another container and I'm going to capture all the Daphnia blood shrimp and there's going to be little bits of stick and stuff in there as well okay um, pour that into another canister and then when when they're in we'll have a look at them there we go there you go guys I've tipped them all in there we've got a couple of caddis flies I kept in there just to show you them when they come out creeping about but that is how much we got for literally five minutes scooping and now I'll put them in here and then we can have a better look at them under a bit of light. Look at that lot. Slowly raise that net up, tip it up and they'll all come out. There we go. We can go over to my other little paladary in there. Just tip a few in there as well because I've got a couple of endlers in there. But I'll just put the light back on the top and then you can see how many we got. Look at that. You can see the blood worms I collected in there as well. Out the strawberry pot. Now there's other things that we can collect. I'll just put you on a tripod a minute, okay, and then I'll be able to talk and I'll be a bit more still. Okay guys, there you go. All set up and a little bit more still. Sorry about the glare from the other tanks. I'll try and make that a little bit a little bit less glary for a minute. Ah, there you go, there's a bit better. Cut some of that glare off. I'll just turn my other big bench tank off. So, you can see, now look at that sea of pink in there of those little baby Daphnia now, or Daphnia, and thousands of them, all for free. 
go out for a little toot in the woods and you can find yourself all this stuff the bloodworms in your garden the mosquitoes or the larvae are a little bit early yet but it won't be long before you uh, you'll be able to harvest some of those guys as well okay it's a great source of feed from nature I know these guys are quite expensive to buy but like I said if you can get yourself a nice barrel put it outside in a nice sunny spot put some oak leaves in it some age tank water or anything like that go out yourself catch yourself some of these and you'll have a, a ready source for a lot through most of the summer to be honest um, I do this every year it's one of my secrets which I'm passing on to you now's the time to get them they're in abundance at this time of year and um, you can make your own cultures up okay it'll save you an absolute fortune especially this time of year with this virus going around and people can't get to live foods and stuff and that's why uh, I was uh, hailed to make this video and um, it was absolutely fantastic and it, you know I really enjoyed myself it's something that I was going to do anyway but little things like this slipped my mind over time so uh, I don't pass that knowledge on but there you go you can make yourself a nice culture now what I think I'll do is chuck some of these in with a little skinny mini in there I'll suck some up with a turkey baster I'll put them on and put them in there and see how she gets on with them okay so we'll go down here I'll press pause a minute I'll get my baster and then we'll be all <laughs> oh, there you go guys as soon as I put that next to her look she can see them blood worms <laughs> she's watching them oh, let's not keep her any longer I'll just prop that lid up take the lid off of that so it's going to look a little bit darker a minute I'll suck some of these guys up oh look who's coming out bang she got that one straight away how's that baby girl whoa spaghetti time don't let that go in and out look fantastic stuff we'll get you back up to speed in no time at all she's the little tummy's starting to come back as you can see there's a few Daphnia floating about in there as well she'll soon start picking them off as well because they like to uh, they like to use their vision and hunt things down well that's going down lovely that is right we'll stick a load of Daphnia in there and then we'll watch her and see how she gets on well that lot ought to keep you busy How are you going to get on with that lot? Is that a bit too overwhelming? Is it? I think she's. I think she's still got her bloodworm actually. All right, let's drop another bloodworm, and I think. Where'd he go? Oh, there he is. Hey, <laughs> good girl. Ah, that's lovely to see her feeding. Absolutely brilliant. Look at that. Feast away. My little Tommy's starting to come out again, look. Well, you've got lots of food there to be getting on with. Right guys, another little trick with Daphnia. Now if you watch them now, just put the light back on and if you notice they're all going for the light. They're phototactic, that means they're drawn to light, okay? And they will be heading their way up to that bowl to get to the water surface. And if I can get right to the top there, you'll see them all buzzing around on the top. And it's another excellent way of catching these guys at night if you want to collect them en masse. Just take a little lamp or a torch with you, separate that little light, uh, sorry, put that light over the top, keep it nice and still, and they'll all be attracted to the light, and you can have one big net full and get a load in one go so there's another little way that you can uh, that you can collect them but you can see they're slowly slowly making their way up now when the light was off they're all on the bottom they think it's night and they like to hide between the leaves and you can see it's like a little little busy as bees in the bottom of there starting to wake up and drive their way up to the surface and also guys don't forget we had those beech leaves we had the um, hazel leaves you the stinging nettles are out now. They're a fantastic sort of source of calcium to get your shrimp shedding nice and easily. 
That's a lot of problems people get with shrimp is when they don't feed them the correct food and they don't get enough calcium and magnesium and things like that into their skeleton and it makes and, and they can't shed the shell and they die and people wondering why their shrimp are dying all over the place and that is the reason it's because they're not having the calcium but these fresh bloods are absolutely packed with nutrients and minerals which will do your shrimp absolutely fantastic and uh, they really will thank you for it but all you do to get rid of them all you do is you blanch them so I, I just saw that coming up in the water column there and I thought little mini was going to come out and have a go at that but I'll keep rabbiting on you just blanch them literally boiling water in a kettle put it in a bowl or in a saucepan or an old something old blanch them let them go soft put them into your tank and your shrimp will go to town on them they really will and they'll pick them clean within a matter of hours and it's all free guys and it's a great way to exercise like I say in these uncertain times you we don't know what's going on and all this you're looking at you is free from nature just for an hour walk mooching through the woods and you've got it <laughs> brilliant stuff well skinny's on the mend which is fantastic got a little cigar there and we'll we'll have her back up to speed i'll give you periodic videos of her over time as she's putting on weight and as and when i'll try and get her a little partner if i can get a little male in there and I might start off another little breeding colony. If you're unsure how to breed these little pea puffers, go back in my playlists. I've got, I think it's about three or four videos on their mating behaviour, um, laying the eggs, harvesting the eggs, bringing the babies on, footage of them from being super tiny, from just hatching. And it's quite interesting if you want to get into all that. Anyway, guys, from me and the million Daphne and skinny mini over there, look after yourself, stay safe, keep your hands nice and clean, and you're all stars as usual. And I'll see you on the next edition of Mark's Aquatics. Take care and bye for now.